Thanks for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel that Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel of the Grace of God, the Gospel that saves our soul today. And that Gospel is not the Gospel of the Kingdom that you find in Acts 2.38. It's not the Gospel of the Kingdom that you find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's not the Gospel that you find in Isaiah 53. It's not the gospel that you find in John 3.16. It's not the gospel that you find in Genesis. It's not the gospel that you find in Revelation. It is the gospel of the grace of God. And Christ did everything necessary to save your soul. Trust his payment for your sins. You cannot earn salvation from your sins, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. There is only one payment for your sins that is acceptable to God, Colossians 1, 14. Jesus Christ made his payment on the cross when he bled and died for you, was buried and rose again from the dead, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. If you choose to believe this and put your faith and trust in what Christ did for you, you will be saved, Ephesians 1, 13. You have earned death and hell through your sins. God offers you eternal life and salvation through the blood of Christ. That is the gospel of the grace of God, folks. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay, that is the gospel of the grace of God. That is the gospel that you all will always find being mixed with works. That is the gospel that you'll see being mixed with water baptism. That is the gospel that you will always see. They'll tell you to do that, then they'll pass a plate around your church and ask for money, which they just put you under the law. And when they do that, they violate Romans 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Now, what's amazing about that verse is, is if you're using that Roman Catholic Sinaiticus Vaticanus text, okay, which so many hold on to, and so many think it's easier to understand and easier to read, and yet there's never a fight over that text. When they produce a new translation, they always compare it to the most majestic, which is the King James, right? So why would they always compare it to the King James if the King James is just heresy, it's the King James only people are a bunch of heretics, but yet they always use the King James as the standard. Hmm. Maybe that's something you need to study out and be fully persuaded in your own mind why they do that. Or are you just another one of those people who can just care less, right? Because that's most of Christianity today. The people who can care less about God's word being true or not. Isn't that sad? So what's your final authority then? Whatever you pick and choose? That's called selfishness. That's called sin. And so when you're looking at Romans 11 verse 6 in your New American Standard, oh, that's the one I use. And you know what? That's the one I used to use. It says, but if by grace it is no longer on the basis of works, otherwise grace is no longer grace. That's it. What about the rest of the verse? I'll tell you what about the West, rest of the verse. Westcott and Hort could care less about the rest of the verse. You get it? Because that's the text they get it from. 
They don't care about the rest of the verse. West Cat and Hort believed in evolution. West Cat and Hort didn't believe Jesus' miracles were real. West Cat and Hort are deity denying heretics that put together a Greek text that is ultimately getting rid of the Bible in this country. Okay, 450 plus translations of the Westcott and Hort. One King James. You better make sure you have the right Bible. And that's what this station is dedicated to. The right Bible. Okay. So we have gone through 10 pages of the track by Jack Chick called The Empty Tomb. And we have not seen, heard, spoke of, not one syllable of the gospel of the grace of God. So as we continue, we are going to see if we find it not mixed with works, not mixed with law, not mixed with yourself, and not mixed with your boasting, right? Galatians 2.16, Titus 3.5, Ephesians 2.8 and 9. So let's take a look as we continue through Jack Chick's track, The Empty Tomb. I'm going to say, so far, The Empty Gospel. There's no gospel. Okay. Later in the garden, this is starting with page 11. Later in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed in great sorrow. His sweat was like great drops of blood. Not my will, but thine be done. He who knew no sin dreaded taking upon himself the sins of the world. But if he refused, mankind was doomed. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Isn't it amazing how he can drag that into Jesus' earthly ministry when Paul had not even wrote it yet? But that's just another discussion about right doctrine. Anyway, Jesus came with an armed mob. He told them to capture the man that he kissed. See Luke 22. Hail, Master, Judas betrayed us. Thou, the Son of Man, with a kiss. Eighteen Jewish laws were broken. And this is interesting if you have not looked at it. It's called the Illegal Trial by Wingo. Take a look at it and email me what you think of that. Okay? I want to see if the doctrine is in you or not. If you've been studying. If you are even saved. Look up the Illegal Trial by Wingo. And tell me what you think about that. Email me through my website at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com from the contact page. Art thou the Son of God? Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Death to the blasphemer, Matthew 26, 64. When sentenced to death, the angels of God watched in horror. Never before had anyone dared to strike their creator, but they were not permitted to defend him. He must complete his mission. Then Jesus was taken to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Art thou the king of the Jews? Thou sayest it, Mark 15, 2. Pilate found no fault in him. Pilate tried to reason with the bloodthirsty mob. Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? No, we have no king but Caesar. Mark 15, 9. Page 14. What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? Crucify him! Crucify him! See Matthew 27. Why? What evil hath he done? Israel rejected their Messiah, and Pilate ordered his death. I am innocent of the blood of this just person. His blood be on us and on our children. See Mark 15. Jesus was scourged with a special whip. It had pieces of sharp bone and metal in the leather. He was stripped and his hands were tied to an overhead beam. The whip tore away flesh, spurting blood. Muscles were sliced wide open. Most victims died from the beating. They mocked him with a purple robe and a crown of thorns. Hail, King of the Jews! He was beaten and led away to be crucified. Notice, this is my note. He was king of the Jews. He's not your king. Okay? He's no one's king today. 
Israel is fallen. There is no Jew, there is no Israel on the face of the planet. The only Jew that's out there is the one that rejects the Bible and rejects the Messiah. With his flesh and ribbons, he carried a 100-pound cross 650 yards to the place of execution. I got part of his beard. Kill him! The rough wood gouged his torn, dehydrated body. Only a miracle kept him alive. I gave my back to the spiders and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. Isaiah 50, verse 6. Isaiah said his visage was so marred more than any man. Isaiah 52, 14. They nailed him to the cross and drove rusty spikes into his wrists. In Rome, the wrist was considered part of the hand. Jesus shed his blood so every sin ever committed could be forgiven. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins. Hebrews 9.22. Isn't that interesting? That verse tells me that my sins are remitted, not forgiven. But Jack says, every sin ever committed could be forgiven. But the verse he gives us doesn't tell us about sins being forgiven. Isn't that interesting? The medical view of his suffering by G. Bradley, M.D., so now we go to a doctor instead of going to the Bible and just getting definition of his suffering from the Bible. We go to an outside source from somebody who probably doesn't believe the Bible, from probably somebody who's never been crucified, and somebody who is just, you know, a doctor. This was the most agonizing death a man could face. He had to support himself in order to breathe. The flaming pain of the spikes hitting the median nerve in the wrists explodes up his arms, into his brain, and down his spine. Isn't that funny? How does he know this? Did he get crucified? I mean, how would you know this unless you experienced it yourself? Because anybody that is crucified on the cross, I don't know, did he get an interview of somebody being crucified on the cross? I mean, where did he come up with this? Anyway. The spike burning through the nerves of the feet jerks his body erect. Then the leg muscles convulse and drive his body downward, beating him against the cross. Exhaustion, shock, dehydration, perilous, paralysis destroyed the victim. So again, are you going to believe your Bible? Like I always encourage you, okay? Before you go to the MD, before you go to the commentary, before you go to your pastor, before you go to your pope, before you go to your dictionary, use your Bible to define the terms. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. Just before he died, Jesus shouted, It is finished. The penalty for the sins of all mankind had been paid in full. Now anyone could be saved by putting their faith in Jesus Christ. Anybody could be saved. At that point in time, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, could anybody be saved? You need to figure that one out. You need to ask yourself that question. Could anybody be saved before the Apostle Paul got saved and was given the revelation of the mystery. And if anybody could be saved, like Jack Chick says here on page 19, when Jesus Christ died on the cross for Israel, how is it that you were saved? How is it? Because in part 2, they understood not the death, burial, and resurrection. Remember? So how was anybody saved in Israel's program if they understood not the death, burial, and resurrection? Three days after the Lord was buried, he rose from the dead. He is risen. Jesus defeated Satan and conquered death and hell. Jesus said to his disciples, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, 18. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And what does he give us? Does he give us 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4? 
No, he gives us Mark 16, 15, which is the tribulation, if you want to use the word commission, the tribulation commission. The word commission is not in your Bible. And who was Jesus talking to in Mark 16? He was talking to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's a minister to the circumcision, Romans 15 eight. So clearly he did not tell them to go out and preach Paul's, my gospel, because Paul wasn't even saved yet. He doesn't get saved till Acts 19, Acts chapter 9. And before he's saved, he was killing the disciples of Christ. He was going after anybody who followed the Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry. Okay? So, clearly, Jesus, in Mark 16, verse 15, did not tell them to go to all the world and preach the gospel of the grace of God. It was the gospel of the kingdom. So again, 20 pages of this track, and we still have not seen 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the gospel that saves us today, that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Here he goes with his gospel message. All who accept Christ will live with God forever in heaven. Dear Jesus, I repent. I trust you died for me. Please save me. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Those who reject Jesus will burn forever in a lake of fire. Does Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 tell you to repent? He does not. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Are you going to be around when the book of life is open? Or are you going to be in heavenly places? Are you seated in heavenly places right now? Ephesians 2, 6. Or are you going to be waiting, are you going to be enduring to the end and inheriting the kingdom and then ultimately be with your Messiah? This is what Jack doesn't tell you. He takes you right to Revelation. We're not in the book of life. We're in heavenly places. Someday you will bow before God. Someday, when you trust the gospel of the grace of God, you are already seated in heavenly places. You've already been given all spiritual blessings, Ephesians 1.3. Do you see how bad this doctrine is? And then he takes you to Hebrews chapter 9. Who was Hebrews written to? I know it's a tough one. Let me give you a clue. Hebrews. Is it a... It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Yes, we can go to Hebrews and get definition, but you better make sure whatever you're taking out of Hebrews for doctrine applies to the church, the body of Christ. You will find it doesn't. Who will you serve? Jesus Christ or Satan? Now, what's funny is, well, then he has Acts 16.31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Who will you serve? Well, who do you serve if you're not saved? Ephesians chapter 2 tells you. Ephesians chapter 4 tells you. It's the prince and the power of the air. You already serve the devil. So it's not a question of who do you serve. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. And this is the last page of the track, which, by the way, I only have one other check by Jack Ch Chick, and it's called The Passover Plot, and we're not going to go through that. But what's interesting about this other track, it has the same last page. So I'm going to have to say that in every track that he produces, he has the same last page, which is really sad. So here goes. Here's the last page. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
John 14, 6. Who's John a minister to? So yeah, we can go to John for definition. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That he is. And you can't get to the Father only by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Nobody else can save you. That's right. Trust Jesus today. That's right. But here's where he screws it all up. Romans 11:6, right? And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Now, again, if Jack is just juggling around Bible translations, he's not going to get that whole verse. Okay? He's going to get about 10 words that are missing because it's not in the West Cotton Horde text. Okay? The New American Standard text is a reliable copy, a reliable translation. They just copied all the errors into that translation, word for word. They didn't fix them like the King James translators did. So here he goes. Thou, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, confess, that's a work, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But it's not of works, Jack. And Romans 9, 10, and 11 is all about Israel. That's where you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Paul talks all about Israel. Israel's mentioned over 40 times in those verses. Why would you think it's for the church, the body of Christ? Then he has you doing more works. You have to admit you are a sinner, Romans 3.10. Then you have to turn from sin. He has repentance as turning, which if you look up the word repentance, it's always changing your mind, then you turn from your sin. See Acts 17.30. So he has you turning and he has you admitting and he has you confessing how many more works do we need to do jack before we end up in hell believe that jesus died for you was buried and rose from the dead so right there he has the gospel believe that jesus died for you was buried and rose from the dead that's the gospel of the grace of god but he gives you romans 10 9 and 10 not first corinthians 15 1 through 4 figure that one out through prayer, invite Jesus into your heart to become your personal Savior. So, if you pray the sinner's prayer, if you make Jesus the Lord of your life, if you ask Jesus in your heart, that's why you will end up in hell. Okay? And then he tells you after doing all those works, you're admitting, you're confessing, you're turning around. How, how, how much do you have to turn around until you screw yourself three feet in the ground? Then you invite Jesus into your heart. Jeremiah 17.9 says the heart is wicked. In Genesis, it's continually wicked. We're going to invite him into that heart? No thanks. What to pray? Dear God. And now you got to pray a prayer? So you have to admit you're a sinner, you have to turn from your sin, you have to believe that Jesus Christ died, you have to pray a prayer, and you have to confess. Where's the gospel of the grace of God? 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. That Christ died for your sins. Ephesians 1, 13. Dear God, I'm a sinner and need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for my sin. There's the gospel. But what did he do? He violated Romans 11, 6. He violated Romans 16, 17, and 18. He violated Titus chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. He violated 2 Thessalonians 3, 14. He mixed law with grace. He mixed Israel's program with the body of Christ. I now invite Christ to come into my heart as my personal Savior. If you trusted Jesus as your Savior, you have just begun a wonderful new life with him. Now, read your Bible. Ooh, he has the King James Version. Every day to get to know Jesus Christ better. Just read your Bible to, to know Jesus Christ better. Don't rightly divide. Don't understand the differences between the diff different dispensations and what God is doing in each one. Don't understand the history of your Bible with its own timeline. And don't understand progressive revelation and... Just read your Bible every day. Talk to God in prayer every day.
so much for what Paul says when he says he doesn't know what to ask for, but be baptized. Which one, Jack? There are 12 different baptisms in your Bible, and seven of them are dry. Worship, fellowship, and serve with other Christians in a church where Christ, Christ is preached and the Bible is the final authority. No, you have to serve in a church. If you're going to belong to an assembly, okay, let's get this right. They have to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25. And then he has, tell others about Jesus Christ. And then he has, here's help to grow as a new Christian. Read the next step, available at Christian bookstores or from Chick Publications. Don't read Romans. Read the next step. If you are... If you just got saved today, as we went through this track, by trusting 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, not Jack Chick's track that'll send you to hell, but trusting Paul's my gospel, you don't read his book, The Next Step. You read the book of Romans. Romans is a stabilizing book, okay? It starts off to get you established, and then by the end of Romans, you are stabilized. Romans 16, 25. Thanks again for listening. Again, this station is dedicated to help all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, Ephesians 3, 9. And that is why we go through people who teach no doctrine, people who don't understand how to rightly divide, people who don't understand progressive revelation, and ultimately people who do not preach and teach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25. We are to make all men see that. And that is my hope when I teach and preach according to the revelation of the mystery. That you see it too. And that you trust, not Jack Chick's track, but you trust the gospel of the grace of God in your perfectly preserved word, the King James 1769. Thanks again for listening. If you have any doctrinal questions, Email me from the contact page at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.